any more from Al? Is there any more? Oh, this is a long one. This is a long one. So either Al has sent me some uh, knitting needles to while away the the long winter hours knitting a, a cardigan, or he sent me a not a hundred percent identified new Sansevieria. This is a brilliant plant. This is very, very, very different. This is a, a John Lavranos collected plant. You can see this is a, an offset from a rhizome and there's another rhizome coming there. It's Sansevieria from Mozambique and it's a miniature spoon-leafed form. Now this is incredibly different and adds a whole new dimension to uh, diversity and variation within the Sansevieria group. So each uh, leaf has a long thin stalk and then spreads out at the end. I mean, look at this guy here. This is one of the uh, the newer leaves. So this is the this gives an indication of what the mature plant will look like when it is full of these leaves. And spoon shaped is a fantastic uh, description. That is a very very different and very very exciting. Uh, Sansevieria uh, collected by John Lavranos. It's got a collection number here, 593. I don't know if you can see that, Lavranos 593. And it's from Mozambique. I did, didn't I just mention Mozambique? It's almost as if I knew what was going on sometimes. Right, is there anything more from Al? Well, you know what, there is. In this next video, we have another one of those lovely long Sansevierias that gives such height to the collection. And this is another one that Al says, I know what it is, but I can't prove what it is. And this is the Sansevieria Intermedia. Look at that great long rhizome there. So this is going to need a, a really nice long deep pot. And the thing about Sansevieria Intermedia is it's kind of, well, intermediate between plants like um, Sansevieria Cylindrica, uh, Batula, and, uh, and those kind of rush-like looking plants. And that's about, that's long. I mean, that's about that longest leaf there, that, that young leaf coming up there now. That's about 35 centimetres and that really, really massive, thick um, rhizomatous growth at the bottom. So you can see exactly where it's, it's come off from its parent plant. You see the ridges in the leaves which allow for contraction? So there we are. Sansevieria Intermedia. It does have a, an ID. PF1084. So I'll look up 1084 and see if I can identify what it could possibly be. Right, there's one left, and the one that's left is another long one, but a very different one. And this is a Sansevieria. 
which is related to Sansevieria bella. And you can see it is already starting to put out adventitious roots from here and it's branching in a range of directions. You see that? So the rhizome is branching there, with the main growth there, it's branching here, and so far it's also branching there. So there again, within two to three years, this is going to make a very, very attractive clump. So there we are. Let's have a look at what we've got from... Let's see if I can arrange them in a kind of pseudo-scientific um, way. Okay, so uh, the most recent uh, unpacking was that Sansevieria Intermedia, which has got that huge uh, rhizome there, which is going into a central point and developing up into very, 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 very long leaves. So that was that Sans Sansevieria Intermedia. against the backdrop of a huge number of completely unrelated uh, Echeveria. A lovely plant, that very, very, very statuesque. Okay, we'll put that one down. Okay, the next one was that uh, one I just showed you, was that Sansevieria uh, from Tanzania, which is uh, probably um, related to Bella. And this is uh, uh, east of um, Kamala, C-H-M-A-L-A, -A. and I do like the way it has a long stalk, and then the um, the actual rosette, it's a very loose rosette of course in San Severius, but the rosette is actually on the end of that long stalk, I hope you can see that, yeah, the lighting's a bit better there, can you see that? Okay, so that's a San Severia affiliated to Bella from in Tanzania and then another long one I'm pleased I've got some long ones and not just rosetti ones another long one is this uh, the one that Al described as having spoon shaped leaves and they're very very spoon shaped I mean look at that and this is the one that was collected by John Lavranos in East Africa and this one is actually from Mozambique I want to do some research on spoon leaved Sansevierias when I finish talking to you. Then there were three Rosetti forms. There was this uh, this little Franciscii. Again, it's got that usual um, snake plant or dragon plant uh, variegation, the grey leading into the into the green. And then the, the second of the, Ros the Rosetti forms from Francisci was this fishery, which is the second fishery in the collection. This one's uh, slightly smaller, but I, I like the fact that this hasn't been a cutting, it hasn't come off a rhizome. You can actually see the cordex there, and that's, uh, that's the plant in its entirety. This is, this is all that there has ever been. And I like that. I like the fact that it's coming into the into the Sansevieria collection in its entirety. It's not leaving part of itself behind. Okay, so that was Sansevieria 
clean the label. Sansevieria fishery. And then the final Rosetti form was this very, very nice Powellii. And again, this is a, as a complete plant. This is the plant. It hasn't been a, an extension from somewhere else or a runner. And then finally we have this lovely Tylacodon and this is the rare Tylacodon Pearsonii and I don't make any apologies for including this because it comes from a very very similar place and similar environment in terms of aridity to the Sansevierias I've shown you and also because it serves in its way as an introduction into the Tylacodon and Cotyledon videos which will follow shortly. But that wasn't a deliberate ploy, it's just what, uh, what actually happened when I opened the box. Okay, so that's it for now. The next time you see these will be when they're all potted up. And for now, I shall leave you with yet another flying overview of absolutely stunning, and I mean stunning, Sansevierias from Sans Al. They really are absolutely exquisite little tropical gems and I love them. I love Sansevierias and I love Jaceina. Absolutely gorgeous plants. Okay, so it's goodbye from Al, Sans Al. It's goodbye from the San Severias and it's goodbye from Kirkstone. I'll see you ultra soon. Okay, so that's the, the recent delivery. So part uh, B really of, um, of the plants that we looked at in uh, the San Severia collection um, section three. So there's section three, part one, as it were. And there was also section three, uh, part two, which we which we saw in uh, Sansevierius four, and this is uh, section three, part three, really. So it's this, it's the third part of the third mega haul from our good friend Sans Al. So let's have a look at the at the taller growing plants now. We looked at the the Rosetti form plants in section three. So we first of all got that very unusual. Now I just want to, to focus on something here. I don't know if you can see the label. I'll just take the label out. Okay, so it says Sansevieria species Lavrinos 5932 from Mozambique, a miniature spoon leaved plant. And I did draw attention to that incredibly unusual um, shape, much more um, like a Dracaena type shape than a Sansevieria shape. But anyway, moving quickly on, if you look down on the plant, you'll notice that almost uniquely for me, that uh, that plant has not been placed into the middle of the pot. And you may know, if you've seen many of my videos, that I'm absolutely obsessive about putting plants into the exact middle of the pot. And the reason for that, of course, is underneath the ground, there's a long two inch rhizome. And the rhizome is heading in this direction. So I couldn't put it in the middle because then the rhizome would have, uh, well, the rhizome is stopping me putting it in the middle. And it's also got a growing tip on the end. So at some point, the rhizome will be coming out around about here or here. And that will be the second head on this spoon leaved. Uh, Mozambique and Sansevieria and it really is a most amazingly unusual shape for a Sansevieria. I mean it certainly feels like a Sansevieria but those, uh, those spoon shaped leaves um, give, a, give a clue to a, com a complex genetic ancestry uh, which is why Sansevierias have been linked with uh, Jacina and uh, now all of these plants technically fall under the Jacina overarching supergroup. Okay, 
there's the spoon leaf Mozambican uh, Santaviria. And then the next plant was a real beauty. I mean, I was so pleased with this one. And this is the plant which is uh, affiliated, according to, to Al, to Sansevieria bella, which you saw on Sansevieria collection video number one. So if you haven't checked out Sansevieria video number one, this would be the time because you will see Sansevieria bella on there. And we've already got these, uh, the main, the main stem, as it were, the main cordex there, which is which is growing very very nicely. And then we've got these aerial trunks, which uh, have created a growth number one. There is growth number one, and also growth number two. And what you can't see is that under the ground there is another uh, rhizome which is going in this direction, which is why I've tried to allow more space on this side of the pot for the rhizome to grow into. An absolute gem of a plant, that. And as, as I think I said earlier, you can see the, um, uh, the relationship between a plant like this, which is, which is so new, it hasn't been completely identified yet, genetically, but the links to Sansevieria cylindrica Batula and the rest of the longer leaved ones. And speaking of longer leaved ones, if I can just fly over yet again the Rosetti form, we have that really, 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 really long leaf plant. So these longest leaves are about 45 centimeters, and this is the of the plant which has come labelled as Sansevieria intermedia. Now it does have a collection number, PF1084, which I will look up at some point. But uh, if Al says it's Sansevieria intermedia, or an affiliate plant, then it probably is. And, uh, and that was our, our little tropical display of Sansevierias. And there was one non-Sansevieria in the delivery, and that was that absolutely magnificent Tylacodon Pearsonii. I mean, you talk about succulent bonsai. I often talk about uh, succulent alpines. But talk about succulent bonsai. Isn't that not just a miniature spruce without leaves? And of course it will have leaves very, very soon. But as far as miniature bonsai goes, that is a perfect example of why people get obsessed with these corduciform and pachycor plants. But this is a crassula, which is a dicotyledon from that section of the angiosperms. And all of these gems here are all monocotyledons related to agaves, dracaena, aloes, and ultimately part of the lily group. And indeed they were all part of the family Liliaceae until very, very recently. So which plant shall I focus out on? Before thanking Al for all his help and assistance, uh, his superb knowledge and his careful growing of, his, of the Sansevieria collection over the years. I'm going to go out on this wonderful uh, plant from Kamala in Tanzania. Um, I'm quite in love with this. I, I really like the miniature tree aspect of it, where it's got these um, overground suckers and then the plant throwing these leaves up from the side. Absolutely great delivery. The Sansevieria um, Mega Hall Part 3, as it were. Uh, part 3, Part 1, Part 3, Part 2, Part 3, Part 3. So it's, uh, it's a goodbye from me. It's a goodbye from Al, and, uh, and it's a goodbye from, well, we've ended up on a different plant, Sansevieria Powellii. Absolutely brilliant delivery from Sans Al on eBay. Well done, Al. Brilliant work. See you soon.